I guess, I guess we all can't be su surprised if a Clinton makes an appearance in some weird, strange disappearance or some horrible makes crime. Makes an appearance and a disappearance. <laughs> an appearance and a disappearance. It happens all the time. Okay, I can't. I have to stop that. Um, anyways, so it comes out at the trial that Bill Clinton was on the flight logs for the Epstein plane, and the pilot even testified that Bill Clinton made some, some trips on the plane and hung out with Epstein. And actually, he stayed on the plane 26 times times over the past over two years. So for a two year period, Bill Clinton was there. And of course, you would think that in any criminal justice case or system, you'd probably want to interview a person who was a sitting U.S. president who happened to go on one of the most prolific jets in American history. But of course, he's never been called as a witness, which is just not even surprising at all. I think I would like to be surprised, but in reality, I'm just not. However, I think it goes to show just how weird and wacky our criminal justice system has become. I mean, we're going to be talking about Kyle Rittenhouse later, and we saw Binger's horrible prosecution and his horrible questions. And so I guess terrible trials have just become circumstance in the United States. But I think that that brings us to a couple different questions. And the first of that is why he wasn't called. Now, I think I have my own personal belief. I think that he was probably being protected by the elites and being protected by this monolithic media that's been um, overseeing the trial. We know that James Comey's own daughter is acting as an attorney in this case. So there's a lot of crossover uh, time and time again. Maybe after Comey investigated Hillary Clinton back in 2016, uh, he maybe told his daughter, hey, give the Clintons a pass this time. And I mean that in all fun. But what do you guys think? Why do you think Bill Clinton was wasn't called as a uh, witness. I don't know. I would <laughs> call him. Clinton is an expert at not saying anything under oath. Not a <laughs> thing in the world. I was friends, I am friends, with an old Clinton advisor. And he was telling me one time about having to testify under oath that was related to some of the, the Clinton malfeasance in the past. And um, his attorney told him just every time, just say, I don't recall. I'm sorry. I don't recall. I'm sorry. I don't recall. I'm sorry. I don't recall. Um, well, the judge finally said, sir, I've never met anybody. No, his prosecutor said, sir, I've never met anybody who doesn't recall as much as you don't recall. <laughs> and that was just the thing. That was the Clinton thing. Deny, deny, deny. Uh, I mean, look, Bill Clinton, it, there is nobody better at lying to see lying to your face, deceiving you and making you happy. They just did it. than Bill Clinton, uh, I would totally call him for something like this. Um, that's halfway comedic in reality. They there's no way. I mean, look, Monica Lewinsky was of age. Yeah, <laughs> that's a really different thing than what yeah. we're looking at with the Lolita Express. Mm -hmm. um, that and that may be a bridge too far, even for the Clintons to make it through. Uh, the, the specific reasoning for why he hasn't been called, I haven't heard an excuse for it. Uh, but, but I would agree with you that he's probably being protected. Yeah. Grant, what do you think? Yeah, I think anyone who is on this list in this little black book that's been found, most of the high profile sort of names haven't been called, haven't really been mentioned um, in court per se. And I think it's the same reason for all of them is that they're being protected. I, I guess I'm honestly less inclined to think that it's so political. I mean, he is a Democrat and he is being protected I feel like just any celebrity, though, anybody with a big name is being protected in this trial. And I'm not really sure why that's happening. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it it there are so many reasons as to why we can speculate why he hasn't been called thus far. But some of the, the things that I was mulling over is the fact that we aren't allowed any cameras in this courtroom. And I believe that's because this is a federal trial and there's some different rules and stipulations with that. But we have gotten to see quite a bit, at least from just the courtroom artists. I mean, last week, a picture came out about Ghislaine drawing her, drawing the sketch artist who was drawing her. And these are just some wacky details so that creepy. are coming out. <laughs> it, it's super, super creepy. And the other interesting thing about this is that there's a Ghislaine Maxwell trial tracker on Twitter. And that trial tracker has been releasing uh, different statements throughout the entire time, really giving people um, fast updates. And I know that they had over at least 500,000 followers. And I know that we were sitting in the office watching this tracker like hawks, making sure that we got the news out to you and you needed it. But the interesting thing that happened today is that this account mysteriously got suspended. And we know that 
Twitter is going through some changes and Jack Jack Dorsey is gone. And now we have this new CEO who's made some really interesting tweets before and said some interesting things. So the next question I have for you guys is, do you think that this was just pure coincidence that this tracker mysteriously got taken down off of Twitter? Or do you think it's probably this deep state kind of corruption that a lot of people have speculated towards? I mean, I definitely don't think it's coincidence. I feel like this is a pattern that we've seen from Twitter with things that they don't like. Anything that's information that they feel like is not going to push the narrative that they would like, it's suppressed. I mean, we the saw the post this. and Hunter Biden's yeah, laptop. I was about to say we yeah. saw this with the New York Post and Hunter Biden story. We've but you can it. threaten to kill Jews all day long. Exactly, they're good with Jew killing. It's just whatever they want to push at that moment. Anything that's not helpful towards that goal, they get rid of it. And mm-hmm. from what I've heard about this new CEO, he's not going to be any better than Jack Dorsey was as far as that sort of problem. I think it's actually going to get worse under this new guy. He's spoken out against free speech and said that free speech is too protective mm-hmm. and that we should be able to <laughs> rein it in a little bit, essentially. So I don't think it's going to get any better. Yeah. <laughs> I say um, I, I, I say that they let people stay on there talking about killing Jews. I think there are examples of that, but I know there's rampant anti anti-Semitism on there, which is what I should have said. Mm-hmm. Um, I, you know, I don't know. I think Grant's probably right. I think Twitter has an aversion to the truth in general. They're clearly pushing an agenda. The, the they are in Silicon Valley. Silicon Valley seems to have been, uh, penetrated and permeated by the woke crowd. Um, there, <laughs> What's just so interesting to me, though, is that it's this trial that I mean, what is what does Twitter have against covering this particular yeah. thing? That's what's really strange. So I was talking with one of our assignment editors earlier today when he was talking about this as a story. And I was asking, well, what 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 the heck is our angle on this? I mean, did they did. Is the account imitating someone else are they breaking Mm -hmm. some of twitter's reasonable rules uh or did twitter just kill them off because they didn't like the information getting out and i i I don't know i don't understand and i tend to think society generally uh flourishes Mm -hmm. the more free information is out there